So, yeah, he's, uh, Joe's, uh, Joe's fun to play with. Joe Cap always managed to mix laughter with victory. He led California to its last Rose Bowl in 1959, before going on to win the Canadian Football League's Grey Cup championship. With Bud Grant, he came to a losing biking franchise in 1967. There, his sense of humor was sorely tested. Viking fans held their breath every time he lofted the football. His passes had nothing more on them than the commissioner's signature. But more often than not, they were caught. And the Vikings found a leader in this gutsy quarterback who never ducked a linebacker's punch on the field or off it. Lonnie Warwick and Joe Cap got in a real fight one night after a ball game. After we lost to the Green Bay Packers, Lonnie was saying it was the defense's fault, and Joe said no, it was the offense's fault, and they got to a fisticuffs about the thing. So we break it up, and uh, pretty soon they sneak out. Well, there's a, a fence there, a wooden fence around the yard, so to make sure no one got hurt, the rule was that one stayed on one side of the fence and the other stayed on the other side of the fence. So they just had a little fence in between them, and they just went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the fence in between them and knocked the hell out of each other. <laughs> He was not your typical kind of quarterback. You know, he was ready to give his all in all uh, situations. And that's what uh, I think we rallied behind. In 1969, Cap rallied the Vikings to a come-from-behind win over the Rams for their first ever playoff victory. One week later, he personally crushed Cleveland for the NFL title. A game best remembered for the indelible mark Cap left on the Browns' defense. Take it. Oh, you, Way to stick it in there, Joe! Let it run in, Joe! It is rare when one player's invincible will motivates a team to victory. It is rarer still when that same man's humble humanity inspires a team to a sense of brotherhood. Probably one of the better things that we had as a team was our closeness as a team among both black and white players. And I think that Joe Cap was kind of a key to that. The curls there. I got to the team, you know, and uh, maybe there were some parties going on with, uh, with the Wall Street gang over here and, and maybe some over here with uh, the black guys. And, and I got invited to all of them. I said, hey, man, but why, why don't we have a party together? You know, I'm a Mexican, you know. I mean, I get invited to both. Why don't we all have a party? John Henderson, John! All right. Hey, John! Hi, have you, have you? I remember when they won the 1969 NFC title game against Cleveland. And Carl was up there waving his fist. And he said, Joe, he said, you're my brother, and he meant it, and he was crying. And Joe was crying, and he had this big, Joe had this big bottle of champagne in his hand. He just smashed the champagne on his locker because that was a very important thing for a black player to tell Joe Cap. That's why they won a lot of games with Joe playing. I know for a fact that there is no most valuable Viking. There are only 40 most valuable Vikings. I, I just can't accept this. Thank you. Joe Cap never played again for the Minnesota Vikings. But the men he left behind went on to become one of the league's most closely knit and competitive teams. That is the legacy of this quarterback, whose habit of playing the game from his heart won him the admiration of his teammates, his fans, and even his opponents. He was, a, he was a good leader, and sometimes that makes up for skill uh, as far as, you know, whether the ball is a, is a spiral or a duck. It, it, if it got there and if, if the receiver knew that if he didn't catch the damn thing and it was catchable, that Joe would say something about it, uh, I would have loved to play with a guy like that.